Oh, hello, and welcome to another entry in the Dylan's 544 blog. In this entry, we're going to talk about the SU carburetors. Lots of mystery shroud these carburetors. You hear a lot of things. These carbs are terrible. Oh, these carbs are great. This is how you have to do this. This is how you have to do that. Let's get to the bottom of this. These carburetors are really simple. There's about four moving parts in the whole carburetor. And when they're tuned and when they're working correctly, they're terrific carburetors for these cars if you're using it as an everyday driver. You're building the race car motor, it's a different story. You might want to look at something else. But for the everyday driver, the SU carburetors are great. The problem is a lot of people struggle when they're trying to tune worn out carburetors. A worn out set of SUs is not going to hold a tune. It's just not. Um, there's lots of guys that rebuild these things. Um, and once you get them rebuilt, they're pretty great. All you need to do is understand a few basic principles about how to adjust them and how to keep them adjusted properly and what to do if your car starts behaving in funny ways. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about kind of the basic operation of the carburetor. We're going to talk about what you need to do to adjust it properly. And we're going to talk about um, some of the things that do go wrong with these carburetors. So let's go ahead and take a look here. You'll see on these carburetors, I have some weird air filters. Your air filters are very likely not going to look like these. Um, this is some weird JC Whitney kit. This is how the car came. I haven't gone through to replace them yet, but um, what you will likely have are some filters that are held in with a couple of bolts here. And what you'll want to do, if you have, you'll either have two bolts or a three bolt variety. The three bolt variety is kind of preferred because the body of the carburetor throat is threaded, so it's really easy to get the bolts in and out. If you have the two-bolt variety, it's a little more tricky because you have a bolt on the outside, and then on the back side of the carburetor you have a nut that you have to kind of finagle your way in and hold everything in place. So let us begin by getting these air filters off and taking a look in the throat of the carb. Some things you're going to want to have on hand before you begin this project is some good carb clean. I almost exclusively use Berry Mins. And we'll show you that in just a second here. It's over here. This is the carb cleaner that I use. Um, it works really well. It doesn't leave any uh, residue behind. It works really, really well. This is the stuff you want to use. So, continuing on, let's get these uh, air cleaners off. And these are just, again, really icky foam filters that I should probably go through and rinse off. And Actually, I should probably just replace these, but either way, uh, you can probably see on the inside of the carburetor here, um, inside, you'll see this is the throat of the carb, and this is where you want things to remain clean, right in here. And it might be a little bit difficult, but you can see in this carburetor here, this is really dirty, really icky. Um, we certainly need to clean this up. So, the next step is to go grab a screwdriver and to pop the little dome off and to uh, get this thing out so we can start cleaning it up. So, we got our air filter off, and now we need to take the dome of the carburetor off. So we'll start, first you'll see I have some paper towels here, um, and this is to keep everything clean. And I always like these paper towels that come in kind of half of a towel size, because you can kind of fold them in half, and um, they're just easier to deal with. So we'll unscrew the dash pot valve here, and this one's pretty, pretty low. I'm just going to set that here, and I'm putting on this towel to keep it clean. Then we're going to find the three screws, one, two, three, and just undo them. It's that simple. And be careful not to drop these because they will drop and it's not fun. So we've got the three screws out of the dome of the carburetor. Now the moment of truth. We'll lift this up kind of slowly. And here's the different components of the carburetor. First, we're going to look inside the, the dome. It's a little bit dirty, but it's not too bad. Set that here for now. 
here's the spring, which uh, pushes back down. That spring's probably seen some better days. I should probably replace this, but we'll just keep going for now. And then here is the uh, all-important uh, piston of the carburetor, and you can see all this gunk here. That's not good. That is a that is bad. This is your carburetor needle here. This is what determines the the mixture, or it's part of what determines the mixture. Then this will be full up in here. Will be full of uh, whatever kind of fluid you're using as your um, as your fluid for the, uh, the for the dash pod. So if you look at this here, I'm going to set this here for a second. It's got a little valve, right? And it opens and shuts. It's it's just like a, a shock absorber. And the idea here is that when it pushes down, there's resistance going down, and then it, it pops out really easy. So when you accelerate, you want you want the dash pot piston, or you want the piston to lift up a little bit. Um, that that kind of takes the place of a um, accelerator pump on a more complicated carburetor. But then you want the the, the dome to, uh, to to lift up. But you want it to drop down again real quick. So that's that's what's going on here. Um, I typically have just used ATF. There is a specific SU oil that is available you can buy. It's kind of expensive. ATF works just fine. But if you change the thickness of the oil, it'll change the acceleration characteristics of the car. Go figure. So we've got this out. We can see this is really dirty. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and take a look in here too. You can see it's a little dirty in there too. This is just normal wear on the carburetor, just burning gas. So what we need to do is use our carb clean and get this all cleaned up. At this point, you want to kind of take everything away from the car, and we're going to move over to the concrete, and uh, we'll show you how we clean this up. All right, we've moved away from the car. We have our dome and our piston here. And when you're doing stuff like this, you really want to make sure you don't scuff up this needle or bend it or drop it or anything, because if this gets dinged or, or gouged or anything happens to it, car's not going to run correctly. You'll have to replace these. So let's go ahead and get our car clean out and we'll just kind of start spraying and you'll see that this stuff will just kind of eat away the gunk that's on there. See how fast that comes off? And we'll just spray around. You know, if you have a parts cleaner, it can kind of do some of the same stuff. Make sure everything's nice and clean. You really don't want to get this stuff on your skin too much, but it's going to happen. I like to spray on the inside here too. Spray a little bit in there. And uh, you can see that now the face of the piston is really nice and clean. And that's awesome. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry. And uh, you know, if you fill this up with carb clean, you'll want to dispose of it in a safe manner, obviously. Uh, but then it doesn't take very long to dry, and uh, we'll just set it back down on this uh, paper towel here and uh, let, it, uh, let it dry. While we let that dash pot dome and piston dry let's take a look at the inside of the carburetor here and get this all cleaned up too so you can kind of see in there it's uh it's a little bit dirty it's not too bad though but we can certainly clean that up and then if you look deep down in the throat there you'll see the uh, uh a little bit more of an angle there we go right there you can see the butterfly down there for the carburetor and that looks pretty clean opening and shutting and then, if we come up to the top of the carburetor, these are all points that you want to make sure are clean and free moving. This around here, this, this lip, this is where the piston slides in and out. That's pretty dirty, so let's go ahead and uh, stand the camera back a little bit. And uh, let's just start uh, spraying it down. And again, this carb cleaner does a pretty good job of just making this stuff just really really vanish and get nice and clean and uh, just making sure that all that stuff is getting busted up and it's okay for this car plane to go into the into the into the car that's what it's designed to do 
So there's some baseline adjustments you're gonna to need to do if you're starting with carburetors that just aren't running correctly, and that's the reason you're taking them apart to clean them. And I'm gonna show you what you need to do and where you're gonna make these adjustments. On these carburetors down here, this is the adjustment screw. And this is um, what makes the carb run richer or leaner. And it's this nut right here. I've got my hands on here. And there's a tool that you can get to turn that nut, but I've found that I can always kind of turn it just like that, you see, just with my regular hands uh, without too much trouble. Each side of the, of, the, uh, of the nut that you rotate is called a flat. And so the baseline setting is you would run the carburetor jet, which is this thing here, all the way up. And the jet is kind of where the, where the mixture um, adjustment is. Because you, you figure that carburetor needle, it's tapered. And so the higher up on the needle you go, the thicker it is, the less fuel is going to come out through the jet on the bottom here to go into the car. So if you're running too lean, you would want to loosen that nut to lower the jet to allow more gas to come in. If you're running too rich, you would turn the nut up to allow less gas to come in. So that's how that works. And what you would do for a baseline setting is, you see how there's this little dimple right here? You want to turn the adjuster nut until that dimple is all the way up. And I'm going to do that right now. So that's one. You can see it's raising. And that's about flat right there. There, I could still raise it even higher than that, but that right there, the jet is now flush with the venturi of the carburetor. And that's where you're going to start your baseline setting. Now, once you get the jet flush, you're going to low, back it down 12 flats, which is two full turns of the bolt. And you're going to do this to both sides of the carburetor. So you want to make sure that both sides are raised up all the way, and then you're going to back them both off 12 flats and it's important to make sure that both carburetors have the same adjustment when you do this. So while we were away I went ahead and took this other carburetor apart, cleaned it just like we showed you the last one. I've already reassembled it. Putting it back together is pretty much the reverse of how you took it apart. Um, one thing to do is while you've got the carb apart is to fill this up with whatever uh, lubricant you're going to use. In this case we're just going to use some ATF fluid. I have a little funnel here that so nicely fits in, just like that. And uh, it does not take very much. Just a tiny bit is all you need. And it's really easy to overfill, but I'm just going to put... That, oop, that uh, should be enough. Okay, I actually overfilled this just a second ago, so I had to go clean that up and get that taken care of. Again, point being, it's very easy to overfill this. It does not take very much. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny amount. And I don't know if you can see how much is in there. That's about the right amount. And I prefer to do it this way. Um, some guys will just put the dash pot dome on and just pour it until you get fluid up here. But then that gets fluid all on the inside of the, of the piston here and, and it doesn't do anything when it's in there. It eventually just gets sucked through the motor and burned out. So that's the only place it needs to be because that's where the little valve action happens. You see. So on and so forth. So we'll go ahead and reinstall our piston. Being careful not to dent or screw up the, uh, uh, the needle. Just sit right there and when we had both the carburetors apart we, we did our baseline settings where we um, adjusted both the nuts up to be flush with the venturi and backed them down 12 flats just like it says in the book we'll return our spring and we'll reinstall our dash pot and it's kind of a um, an odd shape it can only connect one way so if you put it on and the screw holes don't match you just rotate it until they do in this case it's going to be like this being careful not to hit the choke cables there. And there we go. Go ahead and reinstall our screws and then uh, we'll put our, our dome back on here and we'll take it from there. So when you go to put this on, um, one thing to be aware of is that you can actually 
make a little bit of mess with the ATF if you fill it up just a little bit too much or way too much. So we're going to put this back in. And you'll see it slowly is going to go on. And thread it down. What you want to do is grab a rag. Kind of put it right here. Lift up on the piston and it might squirt out just a little bit of fluid. In this case it doesn't. So we were kind of just right on the money. But if you put too much in there, the fluid has to go somewhere. It will squirt out of the little vent hole here. So I always put a rag back here and um, just to catch it because otherwise you'll get ATF all, or whatever oil you used all over the motor. So again, different, um, different oils make the engine do different or make the carbs do different things. Uh, it's mostly going to have an effect on the acceleration parameters. Now our next step is we're going to get our uh, carb sink tool out and you can accomplish the same thing using a piece of hose but I have the little tool it'll be easier to show you what's going on and we'll get the car started and we'll start doing our adjustments and um, we'll see how the car um, likes the new clean carburetors. This is a tool that you can use with SU carburetors to help uh, sink the idle or basically yeah the, the idle between the two. Um, the old timers would do this by grabbing a piece of hose holding it up to your ear and then listening between the throats of the two carbs until the, the whistled pitch was the same between the two. This is a way to get a little more exact and also this will help you kind of see what's going on. You'll see all these numbers here. The numbers themselves don't necessarily mean anything when you're using this tool. What's most important is that from one carburetor to the other the, the, the needle rests at the same point. So what you do is you'll stick it into here like that. You'll see where the needle goes. And this is while the car's running. And then you'll stick it over here, you'll see where the needle goes. And if they match up, then the two carbs are set the same for the, uh, for the idle. And then there's another test you can do to check and see what the uh, mixture is between the two. If one side's a little too rich or too lean, the carbs will behave differently. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. So what we need to do now is start the car up, uh, let it get warm. You, you want to ideally do your adjustments when the car is warmed up and we'll show you what the next step is and uh, we'll show you how to get these things all synced up and, and, and singing happily. We've started the car, we've let it warm up a bit. It, uh, when you first start it up after tinkering with the carbs, it's not unusual for it to spit out a bit of uh, funky exhaust. And don't worry about that, that's to be expected. Uh, but right now it's running okay. So. I haven't put the air cleaners back on yet because there's some things we got to check here. Here's how you check the mixture setting. Is there's, there are on the side of the carburetors, on either side, there's a little adjustment pins. And I don't know if you can see right in here, that's where one of them is. SU decided to put those adjustment things on the inside of the carburetor instead of on the outside it would make it so much easier. So all that does is it lifts the piston up a little bit to check and see what the idle does and that will tell you about the mixture. So in order to do the same thing I just grab a little flathead, flat blade screwdriver and I actually use it to just lift up the, the dome of the piston just a little bit like this. And you'll see the car behaves in a certain way when you do that. If when you lift up the piston a little bit, if the idle drops, that means that carburetor is running too lean. And you need to enrich in the mixture by turning it a flat down. Remember, if you lower the jet, it's going to allow more fuel to go past the needle. If when you lift the piston up, the idle raises and stays raised, it's running too rich. So you need to raise the jet up a flat. Sometimes you even have to use settings that are half flat, so just a half turn. And then sometimes or what you want it to do is when you lift up the piston a bit, you want the idle to raise and then drop back down to normal. If it does that, the mixture is set correctly. So let's go ahead and see where these carburetors are at right now. Idle raised and then it went back to normal. That carburetor is good. And then I like to also flip the throttle just to get everything back to kind of baseline when you're making adjustments. Let's check this carburetor here. Idle raised and then it dropped back down. So my carbs are set good. I don't have to tinker with the mixture, but if I did, um, sometimes you know when you when you adjust one, it'll you have to adjust the other one too. It's kind of a it's a guessing game. It can be. Well, let's talk about this tool here. This is the synchrometer, as we we showed you earlier. 
but we're gonna do it this and we're gonna we're gonna measure between the two right now the car's got a good idle but i'm not sure if both carbs are, are pulling the same amount of air into them when the car is sitting at idle and we want them we want both carbs to essentially be doing the same thing so i put this into the throat of the carb and it rests right on seven let's check the other one that one's resting down on, uh, looks like um, about 10. So we want these both to match. And the adjustment for this is this screw right here on this carburetor. And then on the other carburetor, it's on the exact opposite side. It's right here. And if you turn that screw clockwise, it's going to increase the idle. If you turn it counterclockwise, it's going to decrease the idle and it's going to lower the number on here. So let's start by lowering this screw a little bit. So I'm going to turn it just a tiny bit, not very much. I'm going to turn it like a sixteenth of a turn counterclockwise. Okay? Let's throttle. Let's see where this number's at now. And it's gotten better, but it's still not quite where we want it to be. We want it to be at seven because that's where this carburetor's at. Now your carburetor may read differently. You may read closer down to ten, it may read closer up to five. It, it, what number it reads isn't as important, just as long as the number between the two carburetors is the same. So let's turn that back just a little bit more. Okay, flip the throttle. And let's, let's give it a look now. That's pretty close. Let's check the other one again. That one's still right on the money, right at seven. This one's really close. I just need to turn it just a, just a hair. Flip the throttle. Now let's check it. That's right there on the money. So now both carburetors are on seven. Now my idle is uh, just a little bit low. So I'm going to increase by turning both screws the same amount clockwise. Now that I made an adjustment, I'm going to check it again. So the number should increase a bit. Now we're down a little bit past seven. And they're staying the same because I, I turned the screws the same amount. I'm going to give it just a touch more idle. And remember, when you adjust these screws, you want to turn them the same amount on both sides. Now, well, we've got a nice smooth idle. Let's check the number here. Down to about uh, nine, I would say, there. That one's just a little bit behind. I'm going to back off this one just a little bit. We'll start here again. That one's at about eight and a half. That one's right at eight and a half. Perfect. These carburetors are set. You'll want to, of course, take it for a spin around the block just to make sure everything's hunky dory. And if, if you're driving around and you, and you slam on the accelerator, if the car kind of hesitates and then goes, your carburetors may be running a little bit too lean. Um, if you're getting kind of puffed puffs of black smoke, you're, you're running super rich. But other than that, that's basically what you need to do to get these carburetors going. Alright, thanks for watching again, and if you have any questions or concerns, or if you'd like to reach out to me, you can uh, certainly contact me by the information below. Thanks again for watching. Drive safe.